What's up folks? Today I'm going to be reviewing the board game Lionheart. This game comes from Parker Brothers. It was released in 1997 and it is for two players. Now this is what is called a customizable game of medieval warfare and this game comes with over 90 miniatures. Object of this game is you're going to try to kill off your opponent's king or try to kill off the rest of his army. Uh, here is a picture of uh, the back of the box so it'll give you a little idea what the miniatures look like. Rather cool. So let's show you how the game works. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and show you the components really quick. Uh, right here you have your game board. This is in a grid style, as you can tell. And right here is your typical army that you're going to be using in the game. Um, there are also some extra pieces that you can use to customize uh, your army in the more advanced game. Uh, but anyway, let's just go ahead and show you the pieces. Okay, in your typical army, you have your king right over here. Um, if you lose this, you're going to lose the game. On either side, you have uh, two knights. Right here you have your archers. And on the front line, you have infantry. Now, uh, this is for the basic game. Now, if you decide to do the customizable game where you can uh, swap out uh, different army pieces, you've got these three that you can swap from. This is your heavy infantry, and these are your peasants, and then these are your mercenaries. And uh, each of the different pieces have different abilities. On your turn, you're going to have three actions that you will be able to take, and here they are. The first one is to turn your piece. This basically means that you can take your turn piece and turn them either to the left or the right. Uh, you'll basically be able to turn them like so, um, only uh, one turn to the left, for example. Uh, you'll be able to do that. Uh, the other is move. Uh, so you'll only be able to move in the direction that you're facing. So in this case, uh, I would be able to move this guy like so. And the other is attack. Uh, now, all except for one of the pieces will be able to attack by facing the opposition like this. Uh, if you're the one attacking, you can flank them like this to the side or to the back, uh, but you, this guy would not be able to attack this guy. Now, as far as the movement goes, uh, the pieces that are not on horseback will be able to move one space for each action. Um, so like the archers, this would count as one action, this would count as one action, um, etc. Now, if it's a horse piece, you will be able to actually go as far over as you would like to, up to the edge of the board or to, say, an enemy like this. So, for example, let's say I have my knights this way. Uh, I can move him like this for one, and then turn him for two, and then move him all the way over here for three. And the king does the same thing. Now, when it comes to attacking, each piece will typically have a different type of ability. Uh, infantry, let's just say uh, I am silver and I want to go ahead and attack uh, the gold infantry. For every uh, piece that I have on here, I will be able to roll that amount of dice, and I've got four dice. Uh, for the infantry to score a hit on the enemy infantry, he's going to have to roll uh, what are called the axes. Uh, the archers will hit if uh, they roll the arrows, and I'll explain what the panic is here in a minute. So this is how it works. If I'm one of my axes I decide to attack, I would just simply roll the dice, and I have scored three hits. So uh, my opponent would have to go ahead and remove three of his infantry from the piece that I had attacked. Now, he's not going to be able to defend himself, uh, as is typical in some action games. Um, he's going to have to wait until his next turn to attack me. Now with the archers, they will actually be able to uh, attack in a 3x3 three three grid in front of them. So let's just say I have my archers over here. He will be able to attack anybody that is in this area right here. In this case, let's say he wanted to attack these guys. Um, in this case, he's going to have to roll arrows. Um, now on the die, there are three axes, two arrows, and then one panic. So he has a little bit less of a chance to roll arrows. So in this case, I've rolled two arrows. So in this case, um, he would go ahead and remove two of these infantry guys over here. The way it works with the knights, let's just say I had my knights over here and the infantry was over here. Um, the knights will basically get, it takes two hits to kill a knight and you will get to roll two dice for every knight that you uh, have. So in this case, again, I would roll and I've rolled three axes, so I will once again kill off uh, three of these guys. Now, if it was the other way around and the infantry were attacking the knights, they're going to have to get at least two hits on their roll in order to kill off one of the knights. If he gets one hit, that's not going to work, unless there's only one infantry guy left. In that case, if that one infantry guy rolled a hit, he would get to uh, roll again to see if he could kill off the knight. Um, so in this case, let's just say the infantry decide to roll, they have to roll the axes, and he has rolled three axes. So in this case, one of the knights would get killed off, this one would not be killed off because he only scored one hit, and uh, on the next turn he's going to get uh, two hits 
defense again. The king, it works the same way. He's got a horse, so it basically takes two hits to kill him off. Now, the panic makes this game rather interesting. The only way the panic is going to actually uh, be enforced is if you roll all panics on the dice. So let's just say, for example, uh, this guy was attacking this guy and he happened to roll four panics. What's going to happen is he's going to do an about face and he's going to move one back like this. But what's going to happen is, let's say the archers were over here and we had the peasants over here. And we had the knights over here. In that case, he would turn back and move back one, but the archers would also have to do the same thing, move back one. These guys would have to turn around, move back one, and the knights would also have to do that. And in this case, the knights would be out of the game because they have run off the battlefield. And the king also never panics. So if you happen to panic and you're right in front of the king, you're not going to go anywhere because the king does not panic. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the heavy infantry. And it basically takes uh, two hits to kill off a heavy infantry. So it takes two hits for him and two hits for him. Like the king, heavy infantry also do not panic. When it comes to the heavy infantry, um, each move with the exception of the attack is going to count as two actions. So if he ends up moving up one like that, that is going to count as two actions. Um, so he'll only have one action left, which in this case would be attack. But however, he is the only person that can attack diagonally, and he's also the only person that can attack people that are surrounding him. It's like he has a big battle axe that swings around. So that's a big advantage. Um, now when it comes to the peasants, these guys will hit on the arrows and on the battle axes. So let's say the peasants were attacking these guys and they happen to roll, uh, they will have scored three hits. But they're also going to have to observe any panic that they roll on a die. And for the amount of panics that they roll, they're going to have to move back that far. So since he did get a panic, he's going to have to turn around and move back one. Now the mercenaries can actually cause panic. Um, and you'll note that there is a flag on him. This basically represents the army that it is with. So let's just say the mercenary happens to roll something like this. Um, again, it takes two hits to kill off each mercenary, and he scores with battle axes. So what's going to happen if, let's say, he rolled this, two of these guys are going to be killed off, and since there is a panic, they are going to have to be the ones that will retreat, and they will move back for every panic that is rolled. Um, now, the thing with them is they can actually be turned, and the way they can be turned is if there is a king that is in the attack position facing him. So let's just say the king was over here and it was happened to be his turn. For an action, he can go ahead and bribe the mercenary, and what this would do is he would go ahead and replace uh, his, and his flag with his own flag, and the mercenary would then be fighting for him. And uh, so that's basically how it works. Now, when you're doing the customizations, you can basically uh, make it however you want. You can swap out the archers for mercenaries. You can pick how many peasants that you want to put on a base. Like you want to put two peasants on one base and two peasants on another base. You can do that. Uh, you can do the same with the uh, heavy infantry. So there's a lot of uh, customization options that are in this game. Um, so you can go ahead and do it however you would like. And so basically that is how Lionheart is played. So my final thoughts on the game Lionheart. Okay, well let's start with uh, the game itself. I really like the idea of the customizable army, how you can uh, switch off different uh, pieces uh, with others. I like the fact that they all have different abilities, um, like the peasants with uh, the ability to be able to hit with either the axe or the arrows, but they have a really major panicking problem. And then of course you have the heavy infantry, they move slow, but they can attack diagonally. Uh, so you have a lot of options as far as how you want to set up your army, um, and I think that adds to the replayability value somewhat. Now, the uh, pieces themselves uh, are rather brittle, especially the ones that have the spears and the lances. To give you an example of how brittle they are, when I actually got this game, um, the pieces were still in their sprues, you know, those little plastic things uh, that hold the pieces in, you have to cut them out. Well, there were two uh, pieces of spear on the bottom of the box that had broken off even before I had a chance to cut the pieces out. Uh, so these things are uh, rather brittle, so having super glue handy is a good thing. Uh, if you super glue it, it's not a problem. It looks, you can make it look like new. Um, the other thing is, is this is not your typical game as far as strategy because you have dice involved. You can be an expert in strategy, but still Still lose because of what the dice give you. Uh, I have had uh, several occasions when I would try to shoot my wife with my archers and three times in a row they didn't hit anybody. And there were some other times, if I remember correctly, I had my one of my uh, wife's pieces surrounded by uh, two knights. She killed off both my knights because I couldn't score a hit. Uh, so it really depends on what you roll. Uh, so that does factor into the strategy somewhat because you might have to come up with a backup plan just in case your rolls don't work. Um, so 
if you're not into luck based games this might not be a game that you would like because it does it's not strictly strategy uh, another thing i like is uh, the way you have th those three actions where you have to turn and you can only attack your opponent when you are turned to face them. Uh, that could also add to the intrigue in this game because you could be right next to somebody but you won't be able to attack them because you're faced away from them. It makes it easier to flank people too. So there is a lot of different uh, things that you can do in this game. And, uh, and the dice rolls certainly add randomness to this game. Uh, but overall, I like it. Uh, now, this game goes for about... $30 or so on eBay. I got this as a birthday gift and I kind of got lucky because um, this was a new copy and uh, it was priced way lower than it's uh, normal. So uh, anyway, I'm glad that this game is in my collection. So uh, would I recommend it? Uh, yes, but only if you do not mind having a luck-based element in a strategy game. So y'all, that's my review of Lionheart. I hope you all have a great day and keep on gaming.